Our first reading appointed for the seventh Sunday of Easter comes from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. And when they had entered, they went up to the upper room where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus and Simon the zealot, and Judas the son of James. All these with one accord were devoting themselves to prayer together with the women and Mary the mother of Jesus and his brothers. In those days Peter stood up among the brothers. The company of persons was in all about 120 and said, Brothers, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke beforehand by the mouth of David concerning Judas, who became a guide to those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. Now this man bought a field with the reward of his wickedness, and falling headlong he burst open in the middle and all his bowels gushed out, and it became known to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so that the field was called in their own language a keldama, that is, field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, May his camp become desolate, and let there be no one to dwell in it, and let another take his office. So one of the men who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when Jesus was taken up from us, one of these men must become with us a witness to his resurrection. And they put forward two, Joseph, called Barsabas, who is also called Justice, and Matthias. And they prayed and said, You, Lord, who know the hearts of all, Show which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading comes from John's first epistle, chapter 5. If we receive the testimony of men, the testimony of God is greater. For this is the testimony of God that he has borne concerning his Son. Whoever believes in the Son of God has the testimony in himself. Whoever does not believe God has made him a liar because he has not believed in the testimony that God has borne concerning his Son. And this is the testimony, that God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. And this is the confidence that we have toward him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the requests that we have asked of him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 17th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus prayed, Holy Father, keep them in your name which you have given me, that they may be one even as we are one. While I was with them, I kept them in your name which you have given me. I have guarded them, and not one of them has been lost except the son of destruction that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and these things I speak in the world that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. 
I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sake I consecrate myself, that they also may be sanctified in truth. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The 17th chapter of John constitutes the longest recorded prayer of Jesus in the Gospels. It has been called the High Priestly or Priestly Prayer because in it Jesus intercedes for his disciples past and future with his heavenly Father. The prayer is saturated with a sense of urgency an urgency regarding the end times when all things will be fulfilled and completed. The prayer is also prayed aloud within earshot of his disciples and in that sense also serves as a sort of last will and testament intended to inspire them to continue to persevere in the truth of his teaching. Continuing to keep and hold steadfast in his name. Jesus prays earlier in verses 1 to 5 of this chapter for himself. That he have strength to accomplish the Father's purpose. That of suffering. And in verses 6 through 9, which include our text for today... He then prays for his disciples to continue the mission of love and proclamation of his deeds fruitfully. And then following that in verses 20 through 26 after our text for today, he prays for the church of the future, for you, and also for the unity of all the saints, past and present. The unity he seeks in the prayer is a very intimate one. It's a very close relationship. And he compares just how close it is by paralleling it with how he and the Father are one. The unity he speaks of here is one of faith. But not just belief for the sake of belief itself, but belief in something and someone particular. And that particular, dear friends, is the word of the apostles. It's the message they witness and confess to. And the world, the world doesn't necessarily like the message. Some hate it. And therefore will also hate the messenger. Why hate this message? It is the announcement that God loves sinners and has won for them salvation and forgiveness through Jesus' sacrifice. Why hate that message? And the Savior Himself. It's that little word Sinner. God loves sinners, lawbreakers, rebellious sons and daughters of destruction. And to accept that announcement of His love for me, to accept that salvation and forgiveness purchased with the blood of God for me, I would need to actually see myself as a sinner. 
a lawbreaker, a son of destruction. Oh, man, there's the hang-up. I don't even like to admit when I'm wrong about little things. That Pharisaic struggle inside each of us is constantly trying to seek ways to justify our words and behaviors and color them as perfectly legitimate and maybe even righteous. We even change the language of what we do and say to soften the blow to our egos. You see, instead of through Jesus' sacrifice and atonement for sin to be removed from us, we seek to eradicate sin on our own. If we just decide that a sin is no longer a sin, poof, it's gone. Like magic. But wishful thinking is but an illusion that leads to delusion when we pass it on and we but fool ourselves into a false sense of security that's built on some very shifty sand. But Jesus was sent by the Father not to condemn the world but to die for it. That those who believe His words given and shed for you, yes, for the forgiveness of your sins. Those people that believe those words are now saved by His sacrifice on the cross. This prayer in chapter 17 of John is prayed by Jesus in the upper room on the same night when He is betrayed. He prays for the preservation of truth in the church. He prays for you. That you would have faith in Him. And here's one more important point to be made about your faith. Not a single one of you was or has been, unless you've got a time travel machine, an eyewitness to Jesus' earthly ministry. Now the apostles and certainly the women who followed Jesus from Galilee witnessed firsthand Jesus' death and His resurrection as He made numerous appearances to them after. They saw and believed. But you and I have not seen. We have only heard. And it is the faithful testimony of those eyewitnesses that is the message which our faith was planted with because it is Jesus Christ revealed to us through that Word and by the power of the Holy Spirit that our hope and our hearts cling to Him. Well, now you now share with those saints before you this joyous good news, this oneness of message for this truth which you proclaim is Jesus Christ crucified and risen who is the way, the truth, and the life. Dear friends, you all know that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And the proclaiming of His Word, the Gospel of Jesus Christ and His deeds on the cross and in the empty tomb, is the sacred and awesome responsibility of each generation of the church. The sacred purpose and meaning of your lives in this temporal world is the living out and the confessing of this Word of God in the midst and to the generation which follows you. Yes, you believe. And you have experienced Jesus in a very real way in His sacraments. Joined to His death and resurrection and holy baptism and partaking of His very body and blood for the forgiveness of your sins at His altar. But you would not have heard of Him nor had the meaning of these things taught to you had not someone else loved you 
proclaiming God's Word to you by their life and their witness, placing His Word in your hands and into your ears, or bringing you here before the Lord and sharing with you their faith. Jesus Christ is everlasting life. And bestowing on your friends, your peers, your spouse, and especially your children, the very hope that you have in the one and only true God and Savior of mankind is of the utmost importance. Now it may seem at first glance a daunting task, right? an overwhelming responsibility to do that 24-7. Maybe it's too great and impossible a feat to accomplish. But what a comforting and uplifting thing it is to hear Jesus' own words lifted up in prayer today on your behalf. You are not alone in this task. Your Lord is present with you in the midst of this sacred responsibility. And He says to the Father, I have made known to them Your name, and I will continue to make it known. Why? So that the love with which the Father loves the Son may be with us also. It is truly a joyful blessing to know we have an advocate before God our Father Almighty. And that He prays and intercedes for us, giving us purpose, meaning, strength, and life itself. Praise be to Jesus who sends you His Holy Spirit to guide you in all things and make you His co-heirs and messengers of His grace and love. To Him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be praise, honor, glory, and power forever and ever. Amen.